The Rajem El Hiri megalithic monument near the Sea of Galilee sits on a plateau close to hundreds of dolmens and other ancient archaeological features. However, in comparison to these single chamber tombs and other structures, Rajem El Hiri is massive and its purpose has never been determined with any certainty. To add to the mystery, it's also totally unique in the Near East. Made up of concentric circles with a tumulus in its centre, over the years, several scholars have suggested that Rojem El Hiri's perceived astronomical alignments prove that it had a ritual function related to the solstices and equinoxes. However, a new study published in the journal Remote Sensing refutes this idea based on an analysis of the landscape surrounding the monument and some other interesting observations. Let's get into it. Rajem El Hiri is a megalithic monument located 18 kilometers northeast of the Sea of Galilee. Meaning stone heap of the wildcat in Arabic, the structure was first documented in the 60s. Excavations were then carried out in the 80s and 2000s. The monument was built using more than 40,000 basalt rocks sourced locally. The area was last volcanic around 4 million years ago. It consists of four concentric circles surrounding a central tumulus, some of which have walls that are as high as 2.5 meters and as wide as 3.5 meters. The outer circumference of the structure measures around half a kilometer. Radial walls connect the concentric circles and there are two entrances, one in the northeast and one in the south. Southeast. A clear chronology of the site has also been difficult to determine because of the site's complex stratigraphy. It appears to have been reused several times, so scholars have suggested dates ranging from the Neolithic through to the Late Bronze Age. Very few artifacts were discovered during excavations, which has made it difficult to identify what it was used for. Such a dearth of finds means its function was more likely to have been ceremonial rather than domestic. The tumulus in the centre suggests it may have been a funerary monument, perhaps for someone elite, which is why it is unusual. However, no skeletal remains have been found there. Although, one scholar sought to explain this by proposing that it had been used for excarnation, with the bones then being moved elsewhere. Other hypotheses include that it was a defensive structure or an astronomical observatory. However, as the authors of the paper point out, Rojem El Hiri needs to be considered within its geological context and alongside other monuments in the area. It cannot be understood when analysed in isolation. Since the area surrounding it is mostly agricultural, the structure has remained remarkably intact. The environmental history of the area is important in understanding why the monument was built, where it was and why it was abandoned. Paleoclimatological records show that at the beginning of the Holocene, the Mediterranean part of the Levant was wetter and warmer than it is today. The Sea of Galilee was the main freshwater reservoir for the area and the climate supported rich fauna. Agricultural and pastoral communities would have thrived in the region at that time. A shift towards drier conditions took place in the mid-Holocene. I've discussed this on my channel many times before because it's thought that this coincided with societal collapse and change across Western Asia and Egypt. This may be why the culture that built Rojem El Hiri and the surrounding dolmens went into decline at that time. Over the years, archaeological field studies have been carried out across the region, but remote sensing projects have been conducted on just two sites. Field surveys have their drawbacks in that they are enormously expensive to carry out and have a number of limiting factors such as physical barriers and geopolitical borders. In contrast, remote sensing is a brilliant and cost-effective tool for identifying previously undiscovered ancient sites and archaeological features. Since it hadn't been used in the area surrounding Rojem El Hiri before, the authors of the paper carried out a project analysing data from the Landsat Copernicus Earth Observing Satellite Mission for the period before 2012 and images from two VHR Early Observation Pleiades satellites. In the paper, examples were presented using Google Earth Pro. The research team planned to follow up this work with on-site observations, the ultimate goal being to train neural networks for the automatic identification of further sites. 
Geodynamic and paleomagnetic maps were also used to understand landscape changes based on natural forces in the region. Scholars that have suggested an astronomical function between Roger Malhiri have calculated the sky map as it would have appeared between 3500 and 2500 BCE. This led them to conclude that the monument has a solstitial alignment based on its southeast entrance and solstitial and equinoctial alignments based on other openings and notches. However, the authors of this new paper point out that the axis of the monument would have been entirely different in the Chalcolithic and Early Bronze Age because tectonic blocks in northern Israel continuously move along an elliptical trajectory in a counterclockwise direction. This is evidenced by geophysical geodynamic mapping, which shows how the mantle structure below the eastern Mediterranean rotates counterclockwise. Satellite images of Rojem Elhiri, taken in different years and then analysed using the various illumination-based technique, helped the researchers to get more detailed information on the site. They found that small circular structures with fragile walls near the outer walls do not follow the same pattern and overall plan as Rojem Elhiri, so were probably added at a later date. A similar conclusion was drawn regarding narrow walls built on top of the monumental walls. An analysis was also carried out of the entire Golan Heights landscape, where structures, settlements and field walls can be identified. Large linear walls creating rectangular spaces were probably used to enclose livestock and to mark the boundaries of fields where crops were grown. Round-shaped fences are not as common as the rectangular enclosures, but they can also be seen on satellite images. They vary in size between 3 and 30 meters in diameter and are often grouped together in a flower-like formation. Since they are found near streams, it's likely they were also used for agriculture. A rather intriguing flower structure is located at Nahal Bazlet, one kilometer north of Rojem El Hiri. In the center of the flower structure sits a 19 meter wide tumulus. The whole monument has a 60 meter diameter and is connected to a poorly preserved or unfinished structure by a 32 meter long wall. Another archaeological feature type identified in the Golan Heights are singular round shaped structures. These measure tens of meters in diameter and are similar in size and shape to Rajem El Hiri. They are not well preserved and show signs of later remodeling and additions. Their geometry and designs suggest a certain level of sophistication and it's possible they had a similar function to Rojem El Hiri. There are many tumuli, dolmens and cairns in the Golan Heights. Dolmens have two or more upright megaliths with a large capstone on top. Cairns are a pile of stones essentially and tumuli are earthen and stone structures. Sometimes tumuli are made up of a dolmen covered with a mound of soil. Dolmens and tumuli are thought to have been graves in the Levant just as in other parts of the world. However, often no skeletal remains or grave goods are found inside them. This is probably because they were looted at some point in the past. Cairns were probably boundary markers. The researchers suggest that some of the tumuli could be collapsed round buildings used to support agriculture rather than graves. Herding groups may have migrated seasonally to these areas and the tumuli could have marked boundaries for them or served a social function. Many of these tumuli are located near water and some are situated within the flower-like formations which, as mentioned previously, were probably used for farming. The study also showed that a lot of archaeological features within the local landscape overlap each other, indicating the reuse and remodeling of older structures in later time periods. On a side note, a similar structure to Rojem El Hiri was recently found in Crete, so there's a possibility they had the same function. Overall, the authors of the paper conclude the Rojem El Hiri could not have been an astronomical observatory because the tectonic changes that have taken place there mean its original axis was different then than it is today. They also note that tumuli and other archaeological features do not have to have all had the same function just because they look the same. Many structures in the region appear to have played a role in agriculture. The tumuli were likely constructed at the same time as the linear walls and flower-like clusters.
Future research across the Mediterranean, including the collection of archaeological, geophysical and paleoenvironmental data, is needed to identify if similar structures to Rojem al Hiri exist, such as the one in Crete, and to determine what function it may have had. Such a monument cannot be considered in isolation, but needs to be viewed as a technological tradition associated with other structures across the Golan Heights, as well as across the eastern Mediterranean. The sheer number of archaeological features in that land landscape is huge and they are so densely packed. I think the lack of finds makes it difficult to assign even a ceremonial function to Rojem al Hiri. In my mind, this is a complex agricultural and herding landscape used repeatedly and probably in slightly different ways over a long period of time. Perhaps some of it also played a funerary or social role in the lives of seasonal herders. I can't quite figure out how you get around the monument with all the radial walls in the way. I think from the northeast entrance you can get all the way to the center, but then other sections seem cut off. Let me know what you think in the comments. Although Rojem El Hiri really stands out in the area, I do think it's highly relevant that there are so many other circular structures and tumuli there, and I would imagine there's a connection between them. Either way, this new study has contributed some fantastic data and images for the reconsideration of this ancient landscape. That's it. Thank you to my patrons and channel members. Don't forget to hit the like button if you didn't already, and I'll see you next time.